it's just crazy how this is always something that's put on us. Can women have it all? And when people ask me that, I always say, no, you can't have it all, all the time. At once. You can't have it all, okay, during your lifetime, yes. But you can't have it all, all the time. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy you both are here. And I selected you for this specific topic because you individually have a lot to say about it. We're talking about productivity over here. We're talking about uh, organization, pretty much how to run your life like a CEO. I'm not saying that we have it all together. Mm. I sure don't have it all together, but I've read a lot about it. I try to be a certain way. And I know that you individually have a lot of added value in this in this conversation because I, I watched Jessica. Jessica, if you don't already know who she is, um, Jessica Wasson <laughs> has four children. She used to be a, a very big chef. She worked under the biggest in, in Europe and then came here. She had a huge catering business actually before coming here and worked the longest hours ever. So she has structure. And then she now all of a sudden has four children under the age of five. Um, and everyone goes to her and tells her how the hell do you manage, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to hear from your perspective. And Rania, Rania al Masri al Khatib, um, used to be in one of, she's the biggest names in retail in Dubai. Uh, she used to work uh, at Shalhoub Group. You started Level Shoes, right? Yes. Yeah, Level mm -hmm. Shoes is where uh, one of her biggest uh, enterprises or yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. um, and now she left and now she's on the entrepreneurial side. Um, so she basically manages teams, managed a lot of employees and now a household as well because she's married and she has kids too. So mm -hmm. I wanted the perspective from two people, someone who's no longer working and has a lot of kids, someone who was working. Both of you have, you know, structure. So uh, a little bit about productivity here. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Jessica. Mm -hmm. What does productivity really mean to you? I want to understand because I feel like productivity is very subjective. The word is subjective. <clears throat> Uh, productivity to you it may just be like, you know, reading a good book, uh, I don't know, waking up early, training, you know. I just want to know from your perspective, what does productivity really mean? Um, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for having me, Tree. Of course. Um, I think having a balanced life between my, my personal self-care and caring for my husband and kids and the house, I think it took me a while to know how to have both, you know, on the same, you know, path. And I think I got, I'm kind of there now. Yeah. So this is when I feel the most <clears throat> productive, sorry. It's when I feel like I'm taking care of myself and also able to, you know, focus on everything else. Okay. I want to tap into that in a bit after I get mm. uh, uh, Rania's answer about <clears throat> like what your structure looks like. Because right. I just, I can't even imagine it. You know, mm. I, do, I, I don't even have enough <laughs> hours in my day for my stuff and I don't even have children yet. So I was, I'm just, I'll touch on that after I get okay. your, your perspective on productivity. What does that mean? Um, I would say a productive day for me is a day where I don't feel rushed, mm -hmm. where I feel that things went smoothly and where I was able to put in everything I wanted to put in in one day. Mm. Yeah. You know, it doesn't always end up like that, but that's where I feel chai. Today that's was a productive nice. day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? It, it sounds really nice. <laughs> so these are the days that I feel like I want to sit, watch my show at the end of the day, and that I did it. But I hate days where everything is, you rushed. know, where I feel rushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I feel like there's, mm. I'll give you an example of me and my husband. My husband, that is like that. He mm. feels like, Space things out for me. I don't mm. like for you to book our meetings in a row uh, and then pick this up, then run this errand. And I love having a Tetris schedule. Mm. You know how everything is like kind of yeah. perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. Like right after this talk, I told you I have to be somewhere by 12.15. Yeah. The idea is 11.45 I leave so I can be there by 12.15 exactly. Mm -hmm. My husband would kind of say, you know what? I mean, why do this to yourself? Just put an hour in between. Mm -hmm. Just feel like there's a wasted hour there. Mm -hmm. But for you guys to get your stuff done, do you follow like a to-do list mm -hmm. or do you follow a different format? Um, I think there's just one thing that a lot of people don't uh, realize is that whatever we're doing during the day, we're doing in parallel. We're answering WhatsApps 24-7. Yeah. We are coordinating what's happening in the household at the same time that we're doing whatever we're doing. 
even if it's self-care, even if it's work, even if it's, it's always happening in parallel. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, the no matter how structured you are, and I think a lot of moms get used to working like that. Mm-hmm. But if you don't space certain things, like what, you know, your husband tells you, you, you end up being in that, what they call this like fight or flight mode. So you're constantly stressed and mm-hmm. it gets to you. Mm-hmm. So you need to also realize that you're a human being. You can't be doing things, in, you have to do things in parallel. That's a choice you need to make if you're working and managing a household, mm-hmm. okay? Because you'll always be the primary person, no matter how engaged and how amazing your partner is. There's a lot of things we go, you know, to the mom first. Yeah. Um, so you need to kind of design your day in a day where you're also sane at the end of it, that you're not completely losing it. Yeah. You know, because uh, I, I read a lot about time management, Uh, especially now before this talk, I wanted to kind of get my information. Now, a lot of the talks granted are people who um, either don't have kids or they've had, they have a family structure, okay? Mm. But I had two or three male perspectives. So like you said, a lot of the male figure's role is not what your child needs. Maybe they need you at that point in time. But there's a constant... Um, there's a there's a thing that they all say in common, like a consensus, is do one thing at a time, right? Mm. So allocate, uh, bl- block a part in your calendar to say, this is the hour of the day where I'm going to cook mm. for my kids, let's yeah. say. This is the hour that's going to be untouched. I'm not going to check my phone at the same time. I'm not going to go to my email quickly or respond to a call. This is the hour that I'm going to do the cooking for, for the household. Then I have my hours allocated from two till four for X. Mm, mm. So do you think that structure is, is possible think, when you have children? You know what it is, I think? Routine. Mm. I love routine. I need routine. And more than me, my kids need routine. Yes. Kids do so well when there is a routine. And a lot of people have tried to, you know, tell me, but it's okay, let them get used to this, let them get used to spontaneity. <laughs> Our mothers, yeah. and, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and no, no, kids need routine, kids love routine, and, and because they do, I realize how much I do too, and this is the only way it works. I'm very tough on routine. They, 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 my, my family, my sister always tells me, it's not a kitchen here, you know, <laughs> like, relax, but because I'm sure it helped that I worked mm-hmm. in kitchens. Because this is how time is, it's like, it's like when you have to deliver the plate, it's, it needs to go out, it needs to go out. That's how I live my life, you know? Come on, in the morning, we need to be out by this time, we need to be out. I put pressure, I put pressure on myself, I put pressure on the whole house, and now they know, and they love it. Mm-hmm. They love it, you know? And mm-hmm. they, get, they get lost if, if, if this isn't the way it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. Like, or if we're a bit behind, or... Uh, they get tired earlier, mm-hmm. you know, it, it shows, it's, a, it's like, it's very obvious now that if we don't follow our routine and we're not going, someone's going to get tired early, earlier, someone's going to be fussy, uh, we're going to get lost, there's going to be a bit of a, like a shake somewhere, you know, so I think time is, at least the way we, we do it at home is we like routine, we need routine, and this is how everything works, so the cooking, let's say, I cook at night, I used to cook every morning, it didn't work. So now I'm cooking at night. Their lunch is packed and ready in the morning to go. And this is my time for me. Like, I'm able, if everyone's asleep. I'm awake. My time. My cooking. I can check my phone. I actually love multitasking now. I didn't think it was something I could do. Mm. But I realized it, no. And I do my shopping list. I do everything at night. Mm. I can't do it during the day. Mm. Impossible. Impossible. Because it's like things start happening. And my, it's just, so it's, it's. Yeah. I have that routine, it's, it's, it works, and I'm also able to fit in. And then sometimes, if there is like a surprise, mm. it's easy to fit it in or to like re- um, Shuffle things organize. Hey, because there's something that's stable, you know? Whereas if our lives are, mm. you know, play dates here and there, activities here and there, and know, it's activities, we do it twice a week, I'm not gonna do, different activities every single day it doesn't work it will not it's too much i don't know you're right actually because it doesn't just apply to kids i feel like in corporate as well with your Mm -hmm. structure Mm -hmm. there's also i mean routine you have the time you arrive in the morning uh, that's how the corporation functions by everybody having a role and uh, and putting it all together Mm -hmm. so that they could 
you know, mm. make the... Uh, I think in corporations, it's more about structure than routine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I very much agree with what you're saying. In reg- and again, the data and the research has shown that kids thrive on routine, mm. you know. And when kids are thriving, we're relaxed, right? When the kids are not cranky, we're relaxed. And at the end of the day, I mean, I had Aya 13 years ago. 13 years ago, things at corporate were not like they are today. Mm. It wasn't as flexible as it was. So I had 45 days okay, of maternity, and I wanted to give birth in Canada where my mom is. So I had to go a month before so they can allow me on the plane, give birth and run back here. And I was breastfeeding, and I wanted to breastfeed for six months. This was something I put on myself, and I wanted to do it. So for me to get her to start sleeping properly, to organize everything in the household in a way where I know that my child is taken care of, For me to be able to go back to work and not lose it, you know, not go through a depression, not go through burnout, etc., I had to put a system in place. Mm -hmm. And so many people joked around with this, but the system was put in place for my sanity Mm -hmm. so that I can have these two worlds because I wanted to continue working. Again, I speak so much about how unfair that is to women, and I'm glad that these things are changing a lot, but it was what it was. Mm -hmm. And... That's why I followed very strict sleeping guidelines, which was at the beginning very tiring for me to do it and very tiring to everybody around me. But once it was going, it made the whole household quiet and nice and organized. Everybody knew what to expect. But yes, if it meant that we needed to run out of a lunch with friends because it's her nap time and we wanted to go back, we did it. A lot of people made fun of us. They're like, they're so strict, they're so the best. We're doing it because we want to have... Uh, you know, a, harmony, a, like in, yeah, in their- a good environment at home. Yeah. Because I see a lot of people, and this is not judgmental, but that are winging it, and then they complain mm-hmm. about how tired they are, or they complain that they can't work, or they complain about stuff. And I love the fact that you were in a kitchen because mm-hmm. I mean, I've watched so many movies about <laughs> this, and it's like it's exactly it's, like yeah. corporate, right? You want to like tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, everything yeah, yeah. has to, yeah. everybody has a role. You know, every section is yeah, supposed so to do something. Who did you work under? Was it Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, it was. Imagine, like, those, yeah, the, the yes. kind of people yeah. that have this. Yeah, it was Hell's Kitchen. Like, yeah, Hell's <laughs> Kitchen. Literally. And, and it, yeah, it was, it was. It's crazy. It was, yeah, it was super tough. Because, you know, you guys are saying, you're hitting the nail on the head, and it kind of resonates even with me as someone who is highly uh, uh, trying, to, trying to accomplish a lot of things or I have a lot of set of goals I don't have children today but if I don't have structure Mm. I completely get thrown off Mm. so I'm not saying I stick to my structure but I'll tell you what I mean the minute I set myself up like my day is going to look first of all I the to-do list concept Mm. is very difficult for me to swallow when Mm. you have a to-do list it almost feels like it never gets done Every time I have five things on it, another five things mm. are added at the bottom by the end of the day. So it, it gives me anxiety. What helps more is if I have a calendar set up on, let's say, a Sunday night, and I lock in time slots instead of to-do lists. And if I have, let's say, the two hours of my day on a Monday will be allocated to editing this video, let's say. So I'll try to edit it within the two hours, but I'm at least allocating a calendar Uh, a date, a time, and a deadline, and I'm not allocating just a to-do list that has no deadline. You know, this has to get done. When, how, what time, where in my day. It's so much more difficult to stick to that. So when I do get, I get thrown off on my schedule if I don't stick to the routine. I don't just get thrown off on my schedule. I get thrown off on my eating habits. Mm. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's just so strange. If I don't have structure in my mind, I'll eat at any point in the day. I'll get anxious. So then I'll just go to my fridge, open it, see what's there. Mm. You know, if I have structure, you know, you're allocating three hours here. It's not the time to go to 100 bathroom breaks, get on the phone, eat. Uh, This is the three hours that I'm doing this Mm. task, Mm. you know? Listen, I think everyone's different. Like even with my siblings where we all had the same upbringing and same mom and same terbe and and, and we're very different. Like... um, like my sister, my mom, they can work really late at night. They can start working on projects late at night. Mm. Yeah. For me, this is just like, oh, I want to tear myself apart. Like, yeah. I, I'm not supposed to be. I can't wait that long. I can't mm. do this. You, at night. Sleep. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I and I post. Like, I get, I get mm. anxious. I need to get it done. Yeah. And if I can get it done, I get it done now. And at my desk is my fridge. If you see my fridge now, 
there's like a it's bunch of mag nice. magnet uh, uh, sheets. So you have the menu of the week for the kids. You have shopping list and things I need to buy. And I also fit in my stuff. So I try to remember because sometimes I end up overbooking. Like I had a lady come yesterday and she waited for me for a while because I forgot that I had something else to do. So my the only way I was able to fit everything was on that fridge because this is where my desk is, Yeah, you know, and I can't, I can't wait for something to happen. I need to get it done now. Like, yeah. And everyone tells me you're crazy. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like, just sit, relax. It's here. I can't sit and relax when it's here. Let me just, let me one second. I'll go do it and I'll come back. But you know, there is a concept that is, that is, also generic, you know, they say that you're not supposed to keep a lot of things in your mind. The minute mm. you keep them in your mind, your it's mind doesn't... Yeah, right? You don't have the mental capacity mm. to remember everything. And then you wonder why you're forgetful, yeah. why, uh, you know, you don't get the stuff done. So they say, like, the biggest entrepreneurs always carry a notepad in their, in yeah. their bag. I think everything or written is... They yeah. write their thoughts, any interesting thing. They just jot things down because they know that I need to offload for new information to be processed. So it's the same with you. I feel... Why I got just to why we came up with this idea to talk is because I actually went to Jess. I ran into her in paddle, and I'm like, Jess, you know, sure, you have four kids, man. How the hell do you do it? Amazing. She's like, you know, I'm tired of people telling me that yeah, because I don't feel you. like it's so amazing. No, and I don't feel like like everyone tells me like, oof, uh, yeah. everything you're doing, and I'm like, yeah. I'm not doing anything. Like for me, okay, this is of course uh, the best thing that's have happened to me. But there's so much I want to do. You know, there's so many things I, yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm not doing, like my singing, my, my cooking. I, there's, there's really a lot that I want to do. Yeah. And so when someone tells me like, wow, bravo, like, I don't know how yeah. you do it. <laughs> I have two and I'm not able to, and you have four. And I'm like, mm, yeah. Tell me and you said I'm like, you know, I just don't feel like it's so great what I'm doing. I just feel like I have structure and that's why it's working. Yeah, it's you easier than it looks. Yeah. I think, I mean, to me, I, I, again, maybe it's because of the way I've been trained, but mm. I, I, it's really not as, because I have the routine, I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, there are ups and downs every day, you know. And, yeah, and I think for other people, it's probably, it probably looks difficult because they weren't able to manage it. And having had maybe the, the, the foundation that you did also. I'm sure, you. I'm sure this, this helped for sure. Yeah. For sure yeah. What yeah. is and your and take on? You're talking about uh, Tracy, because you're an athlete. Uh, it's a little bit less structure. It is a lot of structure, but it's also discipline. Mm. You know, discipline plays a big role in in being structured. Mm. Yeah, you know? my sister tells me like yeah that, that you're oh, very disciplined. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my husband is like that, and you know, he's an athlete, and you cannot. And if he wants to sleep, he wants to sleep at a certain time. You know. Yeah. I mean? And it was just amazing having kids with him because he wakes up like at four in the morning. So he had the wow. morning, you know, but it, I think that discipline is is another, you know, when you're raised with discipline. Um, I see that that transfers to my eldest. So she knows, for mm. instance, last year, um, we always rushed in the morning because she takes a lot of time in the morning and we always get in the car going to school and I'm anxious, she's anxious and we're fighting in the morning. And I just found it fantastic at 13 years, she decided this year that she's going to put her alarm 15 minutes earlier than when I wake her up. Mm. And she started waking up because she didn't like the way she felt in mm. the morning. So mm, she started sweet. waking up early so that she can have her sweet time to have her breakfast, you know, to get ready so that she gets in the car, that she feels good. You know, and so it's something that you get at, it's not... It's interesting that she felt that at that age. Mm, I yeah. feel like you're more oblivious to that. It's more important for you to stay up late. Mm. You're not very in tune. Maybe kids are different these days, but I don't yeah. remember feeling so in tune yeah. to what feels good in my body mm. or what feels good in my mind when Which I was younger. Which is such an important topic of because course. a lot of, you know, a lot of the learnings that I've had uh, around parenting when you're a busy woman, etc., is that everything that you're doing, they're watching. Mm. You know, the way that you live your life, they're watching. If you're a disciplined person, you're gonna have disciplined children in general, okay? I, I mean, my mom was a very disciplined woman. You know, I grew up watching her being also very structured and et cetera. And, uh, and it used to annoy me as a kid, but mm. I found myself acting like she is in a lot of things. So it really is when I take care of myself, when it's mommy time, um, when I used to travel, 
I, I also read a lot about how to talk to them about traveling. So they started looking forward to me traveling because it wasn't an issue. Mm. Whereas a lot of moms I know would travel and would cry the whole time. Uh, you know, would myself and leave the house to go to dinner and not tell their kids. You mm. know, things like this. Yeah. But then there is education when it comes to this. There's awareness. You know, you learn how other mothers have done it. You know, yeah. nobody, we're, I'm not... Uh, doing it on my own. I'm listening to other women. I'm reading a lot, you know, and yeah. I'm testing. It's so true. It, and you're saying something like my, my four and a half year old, uh, when I'm not around, my husband tells me, he's like, you're not around, but she's, she's here. Okay. Like they, they remind him of things and tell him, no, that's mm -hmm. not like now's the time for this. They, yeah. they know now because I think it's because I've, I've, I've done it. I don't know. And there's, there's also something you said, like I constantly speak to therapists and child you know like psychologists I love it and I think mm -hmm. I, no mom knows everything no. no and I my role today is to be the best I can be as a mom right so sometimes my kids say things ask me things and I don't have the answer mm -hmm. and I know how much my answer can affect them Absolutely. so I asked once I spoke to one and I'm like what do I do because I tell them you know what I don't know But, but it's nice. I want to know. So you know what? If I ever know the answer to this, I'm going to tell you. And then I, I spoke to her and she said, the, the, the worst thing we can do to our kids is look perfect. Mm. The worst thing we can look to, uh, show our kids is that we don't make mistakes. And the best thing we can do is show, like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Or like, oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, baby. Like, next time I'll make it better. And I realized when, when we talk like this to them, they tell me, it's okay, mom. Yeah. They say it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Then they forgot. feel okay to you do know? mistakes. And they feel okay to do these things because mm -hmm. the reason why it's not good is because they end up feeling... Um, They have to be perfect, and then, exactly. and then if they have failed, and I don't want to do it because I'm not going to do it well. And you, you know, know? It's a, it's Whereas, sister, it reminds me of how my our parents used to tell us. Like, I think my parents lied to me, and they both told me that they were like A students all, all the time. Parents. I'm like, <laughs> I don't, am I doing parents. something wrong? I'm not an A student, like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Or I was very disciplined. I used to do this. I used to do that. So it's so funny how now. I mean, I'm hoping that with how we're educating yeah, ourselves, we're changing. Creating, yeah, but to be you're creating these issues in your kids when you're not humanizing normal stuff. Exactly. Mistakes are normal. Exactly. Failing is normal. You know, uh, wanting time for yourself and not feeling guilty about it is normal, you know? As a parent, it's very important to show your human side to your kids because without us knowing it, if we really just try to be perfect in front of theirs and no human being is perfect, then we're really putting too much anxiety on them because when they do mistakes or when they go through normal stuff in life, they say, yeah, but mom, you know, never went through that or mm. mom never does that because we're always going to be their benchmark until a certain age. Yeah. So we owe it to our kids to show them this. Sometimes, you know, I do something and some, sometimes, for instance, I behave in a bad way with my daughter. Mm. And then after that, I come and I say, I'm really sorry. Mm. Mommy's human and I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done this and this, but something was keeping my mind and it wasn't you. Some, I got an email that bothered me from work because most of the time this is what ends up happening. Yeah, that's the, right? <laughs> it's never really I them. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's always something for me. It always mm -hmm. is. And for them to know, because when they're young, they think when you're lashing out that it's usually uh, about them. Mm -hmm. They'll never link it to anything else. So I started doing that, especially when I was working a lot, because what would happen, and this is the whole meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, you get in the car, you barely have time to kind of, and then you go into the house and you're going into another Not universe, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you go in and you're still in that like stressed, again, like I said, the fight or flight mode that you were in at work and you come in and these children were in a different time zone Yeah. and you come in with that energy your kids feel all this energy. Definitely. So you owe it to them to one, either decompress, and you were saying about going out and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's important to decompress because you know, they want you like that. You're, you, the Tetris schedule that yeah. I'm referring to, I think there's an old school Tetris and then mm -hmm. there's a new school Tetris. Mm -hmm. I follow the new school Tetris. Old school Tetris was like back some 8 a.m. back-to-back meetings. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about Tetris, the way I like to structure it is Tetris of my life. I don't look at my calendar Like it's a meetings calendar. It's like my life calendar. It will include my paddle. It will include my meditation. It will include a dinner. Mm. So it's just the scheduling of my life yeah. and not 
the the Tetris in the context of burn yourself out and then you have to go with what exactly. you're saying to this new world, yeah. you know. And something that's super important is having like protected time. That's yours, mm. right? Buffer time. Buffer yep. time, yep. protected time yep. that nobody else takes that away from you. Not that's your kids. my puzzle time. <laughs> that's your puzzle time. And it's amazing. Everybody yeah. knows, like yeah. it's puzzle yeah. night. And you do it it's alone. Puzzle. Yeah, I do it alone. Nice. Sometimes it's your meditation. I, yeah, big time. Mm. I love it. You know, it's it's my time. Yeah. My husband is amazing because I have the dining table is never free. It's yeah. my puzzles everywhere and he accepts it. You know, he, he yes. not, this is not easy also, I think, for someone to have. A, you know, with your, with your case, Jess, I mean, I ran into you the other day. I saw you um, dancing and like you're partying and you go out quite often. Mm. <laughs> and I know a lot of people may also look at you, me included, and then think, how the hell does she do it? She has four kids. But I know how important it is for you to keep balance. Yeah, no, I need it. Is that a structure that you you purposely put in place? I, I I I consider myself. I think I have a bit of FOMO. Like I don't like missing out on things, and I I need it. It recharge. I recharge when I'm out. When I'm with my friends, and I don't I. It, the, I don't think it makes get me more tired. I think on the contrary, I I have I feel better when I'm back home. I feel better the next day when I'm with the kids. Like mm-hmm. I feel like good job. I tell myself good job. Like you're still with your friends, seeing everybody, and you have the time for your kids. Mm-hmm. It it means less sleep, mm-hmm. yes, but it's okay. For me, it's okay. You yeah. know, like I was out last night. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 I was thinking it was gonna be like a one hour thing. And I had the bag in my hand, thinking I'm gonna leave, and I don't want to leave. I, and I was like, I'm not. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Okay, yeah. I'll wake up early, and then I'm happy. I'm enjoying. This is good. It feels good. It, it feels good, yeah. you know, to go out to just like feel. I don't say normal, but it's me, yeah. who I am. You don't end up losing yourself. Yeah, I'm Jessica. I like going. I like music. I like dancing. You yeah, know. I love that. I like people. But that, that goes to the top. <laughs> I need to see people. That's why my house is always full. I yeah. always have people over and they don't understand. Like, no, I'm not going to sleep at your house. You already have four <laughs> people. I'm like, please, this is not, if you don't know me, like, you, this is for you me. You love it. I love it. Yeah. I love Listen, your it. house, was, since we were kids, was always full. Yeah. Your my parents mom, always yeah. had people over. We were always over. Yeah. Um, but that goes to the point of delegation. Yeah. Okay. A lot of us have house help, right? But not me because I'm not, I don't have children yet, not yet yeah. but <laughs> I still delegate in my own context. And I realize how important delegating is, although it's very, very difficult. I feel especially, I mean, not, not especially for me. I think it's difficult in general because you always think you can do a better job. Mm. Because maybe you can. If it's your baby, your thing, you constantly feel like, I could do it better than somebody else. Chase, it's the hardest thing ever. Mm. It's the hardest thing ever. Mm. Like now I'm cutting down on drop-offs. It's the hardest thing ever. Yeah. My heart is breaking mm. when I feel like I could have dropped them off, but I can't anymore. I need to be with the babies, you know? Yeah. Just this little things like that. And I'm not even delegating to the help. I'm delegating my husband, yeah. you know? And it's still so hard. Or a friend, mm. it's so hard. But... But we need to get used to it because it's it's not wrong. It's it's helping everyone. And, I totally you know, agree. I totally but agree. It's, it's really even hard. in a corporate structure or an entrepreneurial structure where, where where how I feel about it is let's say my YouTube cuts, um, uh, social media posting like on my app page, I I I get taunted sometimes because I feel like I'm seeing a post that I would have done a bit better. I wish I did it myself. Mm-hmm. But there's a there's a Something I read once, it's like an 80-20 rule concept, but something that says that if you feel like your hour is worth, let's say, $100, and then somebody else can do a job for you that you can delegate delegate that will cost $50, then it's more important to delegate it at a lower fee than your hour, and you spend your hour doing what you're best at, Mm. focusing on something else that will get you that $100, Mm -hmm. let's say, or that will amplify you as a person if it's you being a a better mother. But don't don't look down on delegating even to house help or or to an employee or to outsourcing. (laughs) Actually think of it as something that's going to make you a better person, to have you you fully functional as a human being. So looking down on somebody to say, yeah, but she has help mm-hmm. or yeah, but she's not doing it by herself or she's married or her husband. So the, so what do mm-hmm. get the help, you know, because mm-hmm. how else are you going to grow if you think that you should be doing everything on your own? 
I mean, this this goes without saying in everything, right? They tell you when you're, you know, an executive, surround yourself by the best people. Yeah. <clears throat> it was always the first advice that I always got. Mm. And in every project I did, this is what I start with. And it takes me a long time to develop, to educate the people around me uh, and to learn from them. And then eventually for us to have like this great energy together yeah. where you just feel خلاص, you can hand over, yeah. right? Delegation comes after once, uh, sorry, there's delegation, then there's full empowerment, mm. right? Delegation, you're still kind of still looking, etc. And for me, this is something that I applied later on, not after my first kid. After my first kid, and I always look back and say, man, mm. sometimes women, we really just want to suffer, mm-hmm. you know? There is also the social pressure, the yeah. conditioning that we have that you need to and do you don't it know all. better. You don't know better, but the also women can also be a little bit, you know, with each other, oh, it could yeah. be very... Yeah. So I wanted to do it. I had a nurse. My mom had gifted me a nurse in Montreal when I was delivering. She was sleeping in the house. I wouldn't let my child come close to her. She would only come whenever I'm... You know, they're just to show me how to breastfeed and stuff. I didn't want to delegate anything at the time. And I was crying day in, day out. Mm. I was fatigued. I was dead because Anwar couldn't make it to Montreal when I delivered. The second time around, again, there's a seven-year gap. Um, you know, I got an amazing nurse who saved me. And she was unbelievable, one. And two, I was able to really feel very... I'm like, these people also love my child. Of course. You yeah. know, these people and they are, teach our children yeah. to love also, you know? And, and it took me, I mean, for me, you know, I, uh, Lulu's nanny has been with me for 10 years. I, as nanny, who was Lulu's nanny's sister, was ah. with us for 10 years because, you know, we have this kind of relationship. I trust them, they trust me. So it was really important. So other than the nannies is the husband. Of course. Mm. You know, delegating and being able to kind of partner together on <laughs> certain stuff. Mm. Say, okay, this is what I'm going to do and this is what you're going to do. It does not have to be linked to the kids, but to life and of to course. the household and to everything also makes it. I think a partner either makes or breaks Definitely. the experience of a mother. Of course. So what's, how was your structure? Give me like a sample of your day when back in corporate, let's say, with kids. Yeah. With the... Even without corporate, now as an entrepreneur, I feel that I'm you know, doing it all myself, right? I heard you once say that as well. Mm-hmm. I had a huge team in corporate, so it was easier. Uh, actually, that's true. But now, the, the thing is, my structure is, um, I fully, I, I love to take uh, the kids to school in the morning because mm. this is really my time with them. Right. And I only have two. And <laughs> they go to the same school, so it's easier. I can't wait for that yeah. to happen. <laughs> When they go to the, the same, same school, school and then they're older than your kids, yeah, it's, it's easier. I used to not take them to school when I was uh. working because I needed to fit in a workout right. during that time. So I prioritized that and then their father used to you take see, them. See, it, it's all, it time, every time has its time. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and it's, it was right at that time to give that time to your workout. Exactly. And then at some point it's like, no, it's not time yeah. for the workout. Now the right time is to it's drop to them drop off. Them. It's all, yeah. it's, never, it's not the same. No, no, no. It's, and you have to have it fluid. Yeah. And you have to be flexible. Exactly. But like things like, again, I, I really speak from a very privileged place, okay? Because I know my friends in Canada can't afford having housekeepers. You know, they can't afford the help that we have here. But I have the privilege. So why have the privilege and not really not delegate? Mm. So, uh, you know, the, the lunch boxes are made so that in the morning I have time with the girls. Mm. Um, my handbag, Tracy, there's a list on the fridge that says what needs to go into my handbag. Stop it. I swear. Oh my God. My handbag is, wow. I don't even look at it. I pick it up and I go. You're joking. Well, my, you know, everything has so to nice. be there so that that hour in the morning, because it's only an hour in yeah. the morning where I'm with them. Yeah. Um, so this is usually fully delegated, yeah. you know. Uh, Anwar and I, my husband and I have, you know, I... a drop two days a week, he drops three days a week. It all has to do with when his workout is mm-hmm. and when my yeah. workout is. So it's a schedule yes. that we have. Now that I'm on my own, I try to be home every day at three mm-hmm. because I love that time when they come from of school. Of course, mm-hmm. so much It's that half about. an hour where they give you all their attention, but they don't mm-hmm. want to even talk to you yeah. after mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. I also, when I was working a lot, uh, a lot of long hours, now it's less long hours, I used to schedule their activities because I was more comfortable knowing 
that they're doing something than being at home while I was at work. Yeah. Yeah. This used to make me feel, now that I'm home in the afternoon. You want them home. I, I don't need to have them every day at an activity. 100%. I actually like, you know, having them. And, uh, and it's important uh, yeah. to be home also. Yeah. It's for them to get yeah. used to being home. Because mm. mm. then they're, they're, they they Absolutely. don't, they're, 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 they're like, and what do they, we have? And, what and we then have? they stay what with we... each other. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, we forget the fact that kids trip. need to hang out with each other. And, and I have a seven year gap. But the time where they give each other, my heart is mm. like flowing with love when I see them playing together. Mm, of course. Which makes people debate like, is it okay to have one child or ha you have to have siblings in your family? Like it's hard. It's always a difficult choice, you know? There's a saying that says, the bad news is time flies. Yeah. The good news is you're the pilot. Mm. Mm. A lot of people complain about not having the time, but everybody has 24 hours in their day. Mm. The 24 hours will only be split according to what is priority to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when people say, I don't have time to work out, it's only because working out is not their priority. Mm -hmm. But they're prioritizing time mm -hmm. to, let's say, their children, mm -hmm. to um, working, to mm -hmm. giving time to their husband, let's mm -hmm. say. But you're only as good as how much, uh, where you're allocating your time priority, is only as good yeah. as where you're allocating your priority. Mm. So the idea of not having time, I feel like is very much of an excuse that people give themselves. Mm. Because time is not constrained as well to 24 hours. Time is your week and it's your year. Mm. So if you're not getting something mm. done in the day, allocate that time in your schedule for Tuesday. Mm. So even, I'm not telling you to, uh, to fit a workout five days a week, mm. but fill it on a Tuesday and on a Saturday. Mm. You know, because then your rolling calendar doesn't have to be seven days, seven days, seven days. Your rolling cal calendar can be every 10 days, you mm, know, so space mm, things out. Mm, mm. I learned that uh, myself when I was putting so much pressure on myself, like I didn't do five days a week of working out. Yeah. Maybe I don't need to. Yeah. Maybe I could mm. roll my, my, my workout to paddle, let's say every 10 days, I'll have two sessions or three sessions. Mm. I don't need to do the three sessions in the week. You know, you know I'm reading a, a book called Ato Atomic Habits. Have you heard of it? Yes, of course. I read it too. It, it's a great book yeah. because it also is people that say, I don't have time. They're always looking at the end goal, goal thinking five days oh. a week. But he says, just start short, so a little bit. And then Let's eventually... Look at the tasks, don't look at the end goal. Exactly. When you look at the end goal, it feels it's very overwhelming. Much. You yeah, get so anxious. Course. And that's what people say, I don't have time because they I think that you need to do every somewhere. single day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And something else, just on your note, because you you were saying that there's so much more you want to do. Mm. A lot of people don't do stuff because they have the fear of getting that stuff, that thing done. So the best way to look at it is... If you feel resistance towards something, mm. something you re you feel resistance, right? Yeah, so if reason. I think about I think about this podcast, let's say before I started it, I was thinking about it for two years. Mm. I feel resistance, and then I make a, an excuse like I don't have time. I have an app right now. I don't have time. I have so and so. The minute you feel resistance, the only reason that feeling comes is because you have that fear towards potentially your your potential. Mm. Yeah. Your potential of where this yeah. can be, what this can do, is causing that fear, is causing that resistance. So you create the illusion that you don't have time to do it. But the fact of the matter is, you're probably afraid of what could come out of it yeah. and uh, of maybe not doing it as well as you want yeah. or doing it too well and you're so scared of how big that could blow up. Yeah. And what if you don't have time later? So we always mm -hmm. overanalyze and stuff. But I do believe in timing. Yeah, yeah, and things too. in timing, yeah. I really believe in timing. You because don't believe you in creating your time? No, I, I, like there are things that can ha happen at, there's a time for that. Like yeah. it doesn't mean, you want to do something, but now's not the right time. Like when it happened for you, it happened. Yeah, there's you a know? reason why it got delayed so much. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes that, that feeling that we get, it could be called resistance, but sometimes there's something else. I mean, you know, the older I get, the more I start really, really being very much in, in touch with the way I'm feeling, which is my intuition. So if there's something that's holding you back, it might not be, yeah. you know, it might be something else around 100%. you. It might be decluttering that you need to do. Yeah. It might be putting something down to start something else. Yeah. And there's also something about like our partners, you know, there, there are things that say that I want to do, but I, 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 I'm going to do it when, when I know that my partner will be able to fill in the time that I will be giving to Absolutely. that thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is also about timing. Like, I'm in no rush, mm. you know? Right now, it won't, 
it's not the time. I just know it's not the time. There's so much I want to do. Like I can can show you that the amount of things I have jotted down and concepts I have in my mind, like there's really, really so much I want to do. And I discuss them with my husband and we talk about it and he does, I do presentations for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we, there's a lot I want to do, but I, I no rush. Like right now, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing. And I love it. You, you know? know, I talked about this recently and I, I got a lot of positive feedback, but I, I feel like people have selective hearing. They pick what they want to hear in the whole concept that you would have proposed, let's say, and then they, maybe because it's protecting themselves, it, it hits a nerve. But I spoke recently about what I believe to be true, that every woman needs to make, uh, find a way to make her own money for, for many reasons, for potentially losing a spouse, potentially, uh, you know. Independence, freedom. And freedom, mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't say that it has to be right now. Everything needs to be done right now. I just think in due course, However, your 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 life pans out. Let's say just always was always independent, always making her own money. Mm -hmm. Just so happened that life mm -hmm. threw at her four kids mm -hmm. under the age of mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. So right now, maybe she cannot go and do make her own money, but at mm -hmm. least she has the plan for restructuring her life mm -hmm. when the time is right mm -hmm. to be fully independent. Mm -hmm. So. My husband teases me, he tells me, your time will come where I'm going to stop and you're going to be the, yeah, <laughs> you're going to bring in the money. money. And, and we joke about it because we do believe that it's going to come. Like he, he's very supportive also yeah. about that, you know, but I think about that. You know what I also think about? I also think about what if God forbid Wael loses his job? Mm. What, yeah, we what are we going to do? We never know what happens. I have to be also a support that he needs to lean on in case he needs me for a few months. I'm there. And vice versa, if I get pregnant and I can't work, something happens, I get injured, I don't know. What is there, I have to feel like I can lean for a few months. So imagine one of us makes the call to say, ah, I'm, I tune out to this. This mm. is not my department. But, okay, now today, your department is, you need to make sure these kids are raised well. Yeah, it's, a, four. Team. it's, a, it's a lot. It's you. But at a some team, point, yeah. you can find a balance, right? I mean, this is where, I don't know if you guys saw... Um, Jacinda, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, that she uh, decided, well, she resigned. She decided she's not uh, going through a third. Okay. And the press, again, that's very male-dominated, yeah, I mean, some of the press were like, can women really have it all? Because she was so vulnerable about the fact that, no, خلاص, I can't do it now. But she did two terms, yeah, and she did six years. And it's just crazy how this is always something that's put on us. Can women have it all? And when people ask me that, I always say, no, you can't have it all, all the time. At you once. You can have it all, okay, during your lifetime, yes. But mm. you can't have it all, all the time. I love that. Which is what you're doing now. When I had Aya, she was two years old, we were starting Level Shoes. And when and I sat down and we said, okay, this is going to be massive work. It was 2011. It took us one year to create the concept and build the store and open it. Create the team, do everything. And it was nonstop. And we sat down and we said, okay, this is not going to be the year where we're going to try for baby number two. We really need to kind of focus on this. I got your back. Great. This is what we're doing. Little did we know then maternity and fertility kicked in and that took much longer. But it was a discussion I had with my partner. And no, I didn't have it all during that year. And I missed on a lot of things for Aya, mm. you know, which I now, for instance, do with you know, Lulu, like the first two years of Aya's, uh, that year is very flu for me, mm. but I made the choice, mm. right? You know, and that's where I say, when you say excuses, I say, you know, you're in control. You make a choice. If you're going to say, I'm going to prioritize my time with my husband, my work, and this year, my fitness is going to have to take last priority. But don't say, I don't have the time to say, I'm not prioritizing it. Correct. I was pregnant with Aya. I was at the lounge in one of the airports and this woman sat down and gave me this advice. I'll never forget her. It was 30, yeah, 14 years ago. She goes, the first year of every child's life is not yours. The first year of their life is, is for them. You forget your life the first year. Mm -hmm. And if you know that, and if you set that yeah. expectation, Easier. Exactly. It's so much easier than you to say, look what happened and all my friends are going yeah, out. And then I'm not being able to do it. And, like, and I'm not losing weight and I can't wear it. Yeah. Well, that's, this year is all for you. I'm going to gain back things. And it's true. Yeah, and it's it only a year. year. But exactly. and it's only a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. A year that, like you said, 
goes and yeah. you forget even yeah. you don't even yeah it's crazy yeah. Uh, you know i see this with mothers a lot a lot of people judge like it's a very judgy uh notion mm. and it's not just actually in motherhood mm-hmm. i think in general when people feel like they're not doing their part or they're not not their part but they're not doing what someone else is doing they will say yeah but i i don't think it's a good idea yeah. for nannies oh to <laughs> help let's say or uh, yeah i don't go out because for me it's important that mm. i uh, prioritize my whatever mm. It's just not it's not Comparing cool to Comparing yourself with the Jonases, yeah. Yeah, and I mean the mm-hmm. idea is do what's right for you to be as a whole in general mm-hmm. the final outcome the best mother you can be on the day-to-day tasks if yours are very, are different to hers your kids I mean if you go out at night mm-hmm. or if you travel for three days your kids are going to be fine. Mm-hmm. It's okay. But you know Tracy, Relax. this is something you know on on my podcast I interviewed a, a coach in finance And she taught me something really new that I love. She goes, you need to define what your values for your personal finance are. Mm. Because a lot of us think we need to buy real estate. A lot of us think we need to be in the stock market a lot because that's what everybody is doing. Mm. But when's the last time you sat down with your partner or with yourself and said, these are my values in investing and financing, etc. The reason why I'm putting this out, because when is the last time somebody sat down and says, This is the kind of parent I want to be. This is the kind of family we want to have. Mm-hmm. Discuss it with your partner and then really solidify it. And when somebody says this, it's like, you know what? What we believe, you know, these are our values. Yeah. You know, we prioritize security. We prioritize education. We prioritize whatever, you know, but to each his own. Yeah, I and totally agree. Do you, do you, like for me, the, now that we're talking, I'm remembering uh, when I had Elia and Kate, I was working. I Yeah, you were still working. With the family right? business, which looks... always like yeah. oh it's like, just yeah, 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 you know like, yeah, if they yeah. only knew if yeah. they only knew yeah you, you were know? drowning I it's remember it's true it has a lot of benefits but it's also mm. your your boss is your mom you know her partner who's like my dad and it's like I constantly felt like I'm failing I'm failing I'm failing mm. and I was leaving the house dying you know like I'm going to the office and when I'm there I'm like why am I here I should be home it was a constant mm. uh, I'm on the phone with the clients I'm showering the babies you know I was in the car driving and I'm like guys one second I have a call they don't understand what does that even mean I have a call yeah. and I'm talking to a client about a menu you know and it was so hard and for mm. me super moms are moms who work this hands-on whether you have one, three, four kids. A mom who works and has kids and is able to do both at the same time, this for me is super mom. I, I never even thought I would not work ever. Mm. I never thought I would even have kids. Mm. I was gonna be the cool aunt. Mm-hmm. Remember when mm-hmm. Karen had her kids, it was like, wow, they are like mine. My life is my career. I was going to Cape, thinking of Cape Town, my next step is Singapore, my next step is New York. This was me mm-hmm. until I met Tony and and he just like, everything changed, you know? But which is why it's important for you to always keep remembering who you are, Jess. Yes. That's why you do what you do. Yeah. Maybe to other moms, you know, why are you still going out? Why do you still have these things? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just saying you're a new mom. Like, is it important for you to be allocating time to paddle this many times a mm-hmm. week or allocating mm-hmm. this much time to dinners? But... To, for you to find, to remember who you are, to continue to be a good parent, because having four is no, not and, a piece of and cake. And I think my kids love that I that I work out. I think they love that I go out. Yeah. They so love it. I tell example. them. I tell them like guys tonight, let's make it quick. I have a dinner. What are you gonna wear? I show them. Yeah. Yeah. They sometimes help me. You know, and I send, I show them pictures the next day. Yeah. I, I I because I realized at some point they thought I didn't have a life. Yeah. You mm. know, they thought only Tony had friends. Yeah. They didn't know that my, That's a these are friends, you know. So I wanted to show them, no, I have friends. I go out. I yeah. have a life. You know, I work. I do things because they are happy for me. You know, yeah. they, mm-hmm. they like that. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know, they say that um, the morning times usually is highly productive. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're, you're at your, you have the least amount of, of uh, temptation in the morning and you have the highest energy mm-hmm. And and the highest attention span, mm. let's say, in the morning. In the middle of the day, it gets a bit less. Mm. And then in the evening is when you have the, the highest temptation to go off track. Mm. And then the lowest attention span. Mm. So a very good way to split your day is to do your heavy tasks, the ones that are most difficult, 
uh, writing an essay if you're in school, um, I don't know, uh, putting a proposal together, a presentation, like things that are just so tedious that you really don't like to do, but they need, require a lot of attention first thing in the morning. You, we, we've all been there. We wake up in the morning. We're like, you know what? Today is going to be my day. I'm mm. not having a single piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat my greens. I'm going to have my meat, you know, mm -hmm. but then by 5 p.m. you find yourself inside your fridge snacking. It's because you have such low tem high temptation mm -hmm. later on in the day. So to balance your day, not in the structure that someone tells you is right, but what structure works for you. Mm -hmm. So Tracy loves training. I love training. So put me in, in, in the gym at 8 p.m. It's not very comfortable, but I'll still do it. Mm. But tell me to watch my food mm. by 4 or 5 p.m. I'm all over the place. My mind is playing games on me because I feel like the temptation. Mm. Um, if I can edit a video, editing videos, okay, they're not that difficult for me. So I'll just do them later at night. Mm. But in the daytime, in the morning, I will put mm. my presentation, my pitches together, the things that are most difficult. So structuring your day in that way where the tedious things, like you're cooking, you're doing it at night because you like it. But tell my sister to cook at night. Yeah. It's like the worst thing you can ask yeah, her yeah, to yeah. do. It's, it's mm. true. And people, you know? the people who don't get it, yeah. they, let's say when they come over, I tell them, do you mind if you chill with me in the kitchen while I'm, I'm while cooking? You're cooking. Mm -hmm. And they know now, like yeah. nobody, and I don't, I never sit down on this yeah. couch. I'm always in the kitchen. That's you know why people I mean? meditate in the morning because yeah. meditation is so fucking hard. You yeah. don't want to just sit in silence mm. when your brain is busy. So it's a lot of people get the meditation, the mantra, the saying good things, the gratitude mm. out in the morning while it's most difficult. If exercise is hard for you, get out of the way in the morning. And right so now, true, it's my Trace, that's so true. favorite thing in the morning is to do my meetings, mm. like to meet up with people. Yeah. You yeah. do it in the morning. I love breakfast meetings are my favorite. My husband's like that. I love, yeah. love, love, love. But maybe if they're your favorite, then you should move them to the afternoon. <laughs> no, and then no, you do the hard things. No, because of my mindset. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. My okay. mindset is alert. I'm with you. I positive. feel like it's positive. I see, I see. And I really dread anything that's in the afternoon. Yeah. For me, the four to six is my time. Mm. Usually now, خلاص. Now I became strict about it. Okay. Before that, no, I wasn't. Now I don't like making calls. I'm not really all there during that time yeah. and yeah and I like to wind down yeah I wish I had the discipline to wake up as early as my husband does because he is so calm and composed and and getting on with his day because he has that four to six a.m that is completely his yeah I love the idea of that yeah. I just don't know how much I can do it I know, but I, I love to because I don't have kids my seven at my, that time for me is my seven to eight thirty so I, I don't in need to morning. wake up before, yeah. but while is asleep still, he'll sometimes wake up early, but sometimes yeah. I have that time yeah. where I'm like, I don't have to wake up Poncho, yeah. my bird, I have to wake yeah. him up too and take yeah. care of him. So mm -hmm. I just do my so thing <laughs> and I have that, yeah. but I know with kids, I will force myself personally because I need that time you to do it to. two hours early, yeah. you know, yeah. but like we said, it's about prioritizing what's important for you. For me, it's important to have the one hour mm -hmm. or an hour and a half that nobody talks to me and I can either read or meditate or whatever. Yeah. So you... I when you say, sorry, when they say you don't have, you have kids, like people say, I have kids, no way I can meditate them. You can, if it's your priority, you'll yeah. just have to wake up one hour before them. You know, some mm. people, they can meditate wake too. Them up. Mm. And they can meditate too. They, they, kids lie, will, will love it. But, um, you know, like, cause I, uh, now that we're speaking about the waking up as well, uh, I used to work 20 hours a day. I don't can't remember anymore. Like I wake, wake up, it was still dark outside, come back home, it was dark outside. So for me, I'm kind of used to that routine. And then becoming a mom, I had the privilege of something called naps. Mm. Yeah. I could have napped. I could have yeah. slept in in the morning. Somebody else can help out in the morning. But it was, these would affect me so much. Mm. I, I don't know mm. how to nap. When I, when I wake up from my nap, I'm the worst. Cool. Frankie, I'm the yeah. worst. Yeah. I I'm hate the worst. It. If I wake up later, I'm like, Mm, why did I wake up so late? And I'm talking to you like an hour late. Instead of waking up at seven, I'm yeah. woke up at eight. I feel like my whole day is off. I'm exactly the same. And that's why sometimes my husband tells me, I'll do the drop off today, sleep in. I thought, please don't, don't let me sleep in. Because yeah. it, it's just going it to make me. just throws you off. Yeah, I don't mind not dropping off anymore, mm -hmm. but I need to wake up in that's the morning. That's why this idea of what you're saying, discipline and structure and routine, mm. it's important for all ages, you know, mm. even yes, when you're elderly. To continue to wake up at seven, to continue to put your clothes mm. on, to mm. continue to go mm. for a walk, mm. it just creates a habit of you're still alive, you still have structure, you still have, 
You know, a lot of people just get lazy by the time they're older. It's, it comes with age. You think that, okay, now I just don't need to do anything. But yeah. imagine your grandfather. Yeah. He, so what age did he live? Mm -hmm. He lived you know, still wearing a suit every day, going yeah. to the office, walking yeah. all the way to church, coming back. Yeah, he, he was, was always amazing. in sneakers. Mm -hmm. he, because he needed to walk. He but needed but to that move. is also proven. Longevity it's structure. is uh, having a purpose. Yeah. Knowing that you're doing something every day. Correct. Seeing people. Correct. That gives you... I mean, look at Jane Fonda. Her la Did you see her last video? No. I'll send it to you. It's just fantastic. Phenomenal, this woman. That's cool. But yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, structure is, uh, is great. And also sometimes giving yourself a break and saying today I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. But that's what the structure is. Because oh, in so structure, nice. yeah. you, can, you, include, yeah. you, you include your free days. Yeah. Yeah. That's the beauty of yeah. it, that you have the structure yeah. to say my Saturdays yeah. are for me. It's yeah. not like, oh, I'll just do a meeting. Mm. No, mm. have well, a structure for your life. You're making yeah. And you know, you know, Tracy, at some point you get to also uh, tell yourself that if I'm going to do the four to six meditation, waking up, doing my thing, Again, during that day, I can't have it all. It's not going to be the day where I'm going to go out for dinner with the girls. Correct. Yeah, you know, it's not. Correct. Because especially me, at, you know, at, at this point in my life, no, I'm like, you know what? When people invite me during, they say, don't invite Rania for dinner during a weekday. Mm. Because I love my morning. Mm. Yeah. But I love going out on the weekend. Mm. Exactly. You know, because I know that that's what, I know I won't be productive. You know, yeah, when we go back to productivity, I know myself. So when you know yourself Correct. and you still do it, then it's your fault. Yeah. Don't complain that you exactly. can't do it. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Lovely guys. Yeah. I can go on for another hour. <laughs> I really can. But the guys are like, uh, cut. Thanks well, for having us. Thank Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Yay. <laughs>